Well, if you've been following artist problems, uh, you're probably confused while I'm in this uh, shirt. I usually wear t-shirts. Now, why do I wear t-shirts on camera? You know, it doesn't look professional. I should dress like a, a mensch. Um, well, the reason is I, I want to show my personality. I want to be real with you guys at home. And uh, to be really real, when I'm not on camera, I have to actually kind of look like I belong in a grown-up work location. So I, I do wear a shirt. But the reason for this was that over-the-ear mic is just getting crazy. I'm already boring people with this behind-the-scenes stuff, but I hope it sounds good, and I, I hope that you'll forgive me if I'm not in my usual garb. All right, so today we're going to be talking about the tools every oil painter should have, in my opinion. Again, this is all my opinion, okay? I want to talk to things that I feel will help uh, your ease of using oils, help give you better results, and use it safer, okay? Those are all very important topics that I want to touch on. Now, there are a lot of people on YouTube uh, or anywhere that you'll find that will tell you what you need to have. And I guess what I want to say for those of you that have no idea what I was talking about with my t-shirt, aren't following my videos, why should you listen to my advice? Well, you don't have to, of course, but where I'm coming from is a little bit different. An artist will tell you their preferences, their biases. This is what they use, and this is you know, what they've always used, and, and, and it works for them. I want to help you find things that will work for you, right? And I want to find, and I'm also not with a company, so I'm not, I'm not coming here from like, I don't know, uh, Old Holland saying, hey, you got to use Old Holland paint. Uh, I'm coming here, you know, I'm, I'm Mike, not Jerry, which uh, I'm Jerry's grandson, um, and we sell everything, you know, and I really believe that these items that I've kind of picked out um, are things that can help you on your art journey. If you uh, have not considered them, I hope that you will. Just leave it at that, okay? I'm, I don't like to come up here and be a very pushy salesman. My grandfather was a great salesman, uh, but he came from a different time, and um, it's actually kind of funny, if I can do a quick anecdote, I don't know if we'll edit this out or not, I don't know if anybody cares, but um, when I started working for the company like 15 years ago, uh, I was in charge of what we call Jerry's Days, where we would send my grandfather to our stores for two days, we'd have a, a big party, a big sale, and everybody could meet Jerry, he would sign little dolls, it was, it was very cute. Uh, and, you know, people like me, he was a very charismatic guy. Um, my grandfather was really just a wonderful person to be around. He made everybody feel good. Uh, that was uh, one of his many um, talents. But uh, sometimes the salesman in him would get the better of him. And he forgot that the Jerry's days was, as much as it was like, hey, it's a sale, it's about him. So I remember being in one of our stores, and he walks, and, and some customers walks in, and my grandfather greets them. Rather than saying, like, hi, welcome to Jerry's, he just says, everything in the store is 20% off. And I was just like, and he's Jerry, <laughs> you know. <laughs> anyway, metal brush washers, all right? I like these guys. Why do I like them? Brush cleaners, especially the ones that we're going to talk about later, can be expensive, all right? You can find very inexpensive brush cleaners, but what will they do to your health? I don't know. I mean... You can buy a gallon of turpentine at a home goods store, you know, a home improvement store. Um, but you know, mineral spirits, uh, things designed for artists, even odorless thinners, these all have carcinogens and are dangerous, um, but are also expensive. And they get more expensive the less dangerous they get. Um, these metal brush cleaners, first of all, are airtight, so the fumes don't off-gas it, it. It keeps it kind of in there. Also, I just find them very functional. Because in terms of the cost of those materials, these brush cleaners, one of the things I like to tell people to do is, so if you look in there, what you're going to do is you're going to fill it up with brush cleaner, right? And then you're going to clean your brush, and you'll use this to kind of get the excess paint off it. And then you're going to just kind of set it and forget it. You know, you close it up. And when the next time you go to paint, all you do is take this out. And what you'll notice is that if you slowly pour out the brush cleaner, all the paint has settled to the bottom. So you'll have nothing but clean brush cleaner coming out that you can put into a different container. And then you're just going to take this, wipe this out, and throw it away. It's, it's not like it's wet. I don't, I don't think it's, uh, you know, usually, you know, with oil mediums, you're supposed to take it to the dump. But 
I'm saying you can keep reusing this. So honestly, a bottle like this, uh, the, a brush cleaner, could last you quite a long time, uh, and you can buy it in smaller sizes if you use it properly and you give it that time to settle in between painting sessions. Uh, so this is a great investment. Uh, you know, some kind of metal brush cleaner to keep fumes in, let the paint settle, ease of use, and out of the way. And I'll tell you that if you have little ones in the house, having something that snaps securely, now this isn't child locked by any means, but for my two year old, it would be hard for her to open this. Um, and any older than that, uh, I guess it's just natural selection. Uh, so um, keep that in mind, okay? Let's keep the kids safe. Maybe that was a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> take all precautions necessary. Saves you money, protects you from fumes, spills, and the spills are also a big thing uh, because when you're not painting and you have a container sitting out there, even if it's water, you know, you can knock it over and make a mess. So, yeah, good stuff. We're talking about mediums, right? I want to talk to you about Chelsea Classical Studio. Now, if you've been following my videos, you know that I talk about Chelsea Classical Studio a lot. It's um, the safest mediums for oil painters to use by far. There are no known carcinogens because of the lavender spike oil that they use in place of turpentine and other um, noxious chemicals and uh, fluids that are used to clean paint. Um, and that goes for their brush cleaners and their mediums. So these mediums, all these mediums are safe to breathe, okay? You don't need any special ventilation when you're using these, which is huge because Sometimes, like I used to paint in, a, in an attic space, I'd open the window and I'd be getting these headaches and I thought I was airing it out, but there was no air circulation. So fortunately, because you know, I am in the art business, my, my dad got me a giant air filter and my headaches went away, uh, which we call R2-D2. Um, but, uh, but now that I'm using this, I don't need it anymore. And so if you consider the fact that those big air filters are very expensive, investing in mediums uh, is a lot less and it's better for your health. Um, and they work beautifully. You know, they've got, m one of my favorite things they do, I don't know if I have any up here, is they have uh, a fat and lean medium, which uh, really helps, oh, here we go, with painting fat over lean. Um, it's something that a lot of artists struggle with, is like, am, am I painting fat over lean? Is this too fat, too thin? Um, just using these mediums really simplifies it. You start your bottom layers, adding the lean medium, then go into it with the fat uh, medium for uh, the, the top layers for especially an artist that is trying to master oils for the first time, these can really help ease you into it as you slowly learn how mediums work and their interactions with your paint and the final results, okay? Um, also, <coughs> they have by far the purest, cleanest, brightest linseed oil ever. It's ultra clean and purified. Do I have any of that up here? Of course not. Uh, all right, give me a second. I want to find some of this stuff. Oh, you're right, you're right, right, right. Um, it was right in front of me the whole time. Thank you, Katie. Mm -hmm. So this is their linseed oil, extra pale, okay? Now, if you've ever seen traditional linseed oil, it's fairly yellow and will yellow over time. Their linseed oil is cold pressed and processed so that um, they basically remove all the schmutz, I mean, for lack of a better term, uh, getting it ultra pure, ultra bright. Uh, it's a fantastic linseed oil. and. The reason that linseed oil is a very good oil is, uh, for, for some people or most people is it's faster drying and it's very flexible. You know, some of these other oils um, might be flexible, but they don't dry as fast. Um, you know, uh, like safflower oil, I believe, is, uh, you know, maybe not as flexible as linseed oil, but flexible, but it dries much slower. And then you've got poppy oil, which can be more brittle. This is a good just, if you needed one good all-round medium, I mean, the linseed oil extra pale it's fantastic. You can add it to whites without it yellowing it, you know, the way a regular linseed oil would. Um, add it to your paints and it has all those benefits. So really a great, well-designed line of paint. <laughs> really a great, well-designed line of mediums. I'm not going to, you know, make any excuses here. Uh, oil painting is not the cheapest of hobbies. And so if you are going to be painting in oils, how can you have the best experience and make sure that you're not constantly having to reinvest in things that you shouldn't have to? Now, hopefully, you're reinvesting in more paint and canvas because you're painting, right? But there are certain things that you shouldn't have to reinvest in on a very regular basis, that being things like brushes and your tools. So how do we protect the investment? Because if you're going to be painting, you want to use a good brush, and they're not always inexpensive. 
The best way, the best thing you can do is buy a higher end brush because it will give you a better performance and make it last longer. Treat the brush like it was your child with, with tender love and care. And going back to the Chelsea Classical, and I'm sorry if this is, seems salesy, I'm just trying to make sure that you know that these things are out there. That's not my, that's not my jam, as I like to say. Um, these two, this dynamic duo here, I'll put the camera to Will, uh, will preserve the life of your brush tenfold. It is so well done. This is again, this is a brush cleaner. So imagine like turpinoid, which they say is odorless. It doesn't have a bad smell, but that doesn't mean it's safe to breathe. This is, uh, well, this is actually the, um, do we have the uh, lavender? Oil painting is not the cheapest hobby. There are cheaper hobbies out there, but you want to be an oil painter, you want to invest in oil painting, you want to have a good experience. Um, there are certain things that, unfortunately, well, <laughs> There are certain things that you will have to replenish, right? Hopefully you're going through a lot of paint because you're painting, which means you're probably going through a lot of canvas. But there are things that you don't have to constantly replenish if you take good care of them. And that being one of your most important tools, your brushes. Your brushes are the extension of you. And they should behave the way you anticipate them to work. And they should last you a long time. But they will only last a long time if they're treated properly, OK? So you have to treat these brushes with tender love and care. And uh, getting back to the Chelsea Classical Studio, again, I don't like to be very pushy with sales. That's not my intention. It's just kind of showing you um, something here. They have this, uh, I call it the Dynamic Duo. This is their lavender brush cleaner, OK? This, like everything else in their line, is safe to breathe. You might have heard of odorless thinner. It might have very low odor, but it, it is still noxious. You will get a headache from it if you breathe it in, because there are still carcinogens. This is safe to breathe. This is safe. In fact, it's uh, ACMI certified AP. I don't know any other um, brush cleaner that isn't labeled toxic. Okay, this means that this could potentially be used in schools, grade schools. Now, once you clean the brush, just like your own hair, conditioning the brush, lavender and olive soap. Again, this smells wonderful, especially if you like lavender. Um, rich lather really conditions the hairs. And, and by just taking the time after painting sessions, not letting those pigments dry up in the bristles, which cause the hairs to kind of flare out, um, you can buy really quality brushes and have them last a long time. Um, or you can you know, not treat your brushes right and buy cheap brushes and just keep replenishing them, which is just kind of wasteful. But you know, do what works for you. I mean, I, I'm not up here to judge. I'm, I'm here to give you options. When it comes to palettes, this is something very particular to me, okay? Um, any of you guys that are established oil painters might have your groove, your jam. You know what you like and you're going to stick with it. Don't worry about this. Skip ahead, okay? I'm talking about a palette that for me, what I believe from what I've seen for my own use and also working with other artists, there is nothing like a glass palette, man, okay? Now some artists swear by wooden palettes, like traditional wooden palettes like this one behind me. Uh, and they're great. They're great. They, they, they do a good job. You can hold them in your hand if you're comfortable painting that way. And that kind of like, I don't want to say Bob Ross style, but everybody knows that, you know, that look. Of course, he was using a plexiglass palette, so maybe that's a bad analogy. But the traditional wooden palette. Um, I find them uh, nice, and I feel very like, you know, I should wear a beret. You know, it's a very official art experience. But they're a pain in the butt to clean. Uh, even once you clean them and you season them with oil, they stain. I much prefer using a glass palette. Now, these are new wave palettes. Um, I mean, you can go and have pieces of glass cut, uh, you know, and use that. What they did is they used tempered glass, which is a lot safer. The edges aren't going to slice your fingers off because they've all been smoothed over. There's pads already on them to protect your furniture. And another thing I really like is the options. So some people are used to painting on white palettes, right? So this one is white. You can have a clear palette, right? And this would just be whatever's underneath it. So maybe you wanted, for whatever reason, a, a green palette. Put a green piece of paper underneath. I, you know, put it on a glass table and you have a clear palette. Um, and then my preference is the neutral gray, which uh, gives you a better idea of how the colors will set up on the painting overall, because you're not getting like a, a blinding bright white underneath it. But these palettes, why I really like them so much is that they clean super easy. I'm all about making, <sighs> okay, again, those of you that know me, this is old news, okay? I have very bad OCD. So for me, 
cleaning is just a part of my life, uh, which I want to keep short <laughs> because I'm always doing it. So being able to just take a palette knife and scrape the paint away and not having to go and season this or, or, or try to you know, wash it in the sink, whatever, um, really it, it's, it's non-porous. It, the paint comes off very easily, doesn't leave a, a, a mark most of the time unless you're using maybe a particularly staining pigment, uh, uh, unless you're using a particular staining pigment. Um, but these are definitely my preference and um, for when I paint and for when I've seen a lot of other artists paint, because I've seen artists paint using everything from disposable palettes to wooden palettes to, you know, these, these are the ones that I just see people having the easiest time with overall. So it's not, it's not just me in that, um, but again, there's a lot of taste and preference. So I, you know, keep that in mind that you might have a different preference, but this is just from my experience what I've seen, okay? All right, we're talking about safety. Now, a lot of the things that we've talked about so far have to do with the air we breathe, but um, some pigments in the paints uh, are toxic, right? So if you are painting with a heavy metal paint like a cobalt or cadmium color, um, these are toxic. Now, not to breathe, but uh, toxic to the touch. Um, uh, they can absorb into the skin, the, the heavy metal. If you're using a lead white, they can absorb into your skin. Also, don't eat it but let's just assume you're not eating paint. It's just you get some on your skin. If it stays there, it can cause harm. Uh, I recommend one of two things. Wear rubber gloves, okay? And if you don't like wearing a glove, because I know I don't, um, gloves in a bottle. It's really great, it's a barrier cream. You put a, l a little bit goes a really long way. Here, I, ugh, I hate putting stuff in my hands, but I use this all the time, so I, I can show you I'm used to it. You just need, uh, you, you, a little goes a long way like literally like that much and I'm still like like now I'm gonna literally like sit here and rub this until it's absorbed like that was not much did you even see it did I okay making sure that you got it and I've got this extra protection on my hands now you might say well how do you know it's actually doing anything I can't but I will tell you this and this is probably a very good sign for it actually doing what it says it's gonna do um, Besides the fact that I have not had any heavy metal issues in my blood, which is a good thing, um, have you ever painted and then you find yourself scrubbing your hands for hours on end to get off some of those staining pigments? I find that when I use this, the paint comes off my hands much easier, which is great. So it stands to reason that if the paint's coming off my hands much easier, it's because it's not absorbing into my skin. So keep that in mind. Uh, gloves in a bottle or gloves, for these, especially when you're using pigments that have heavy metals, they'll, they'll be labeled CL. Um, uh, they'll have this kind of label, a cautionary label uh, in the pigments. So when you're looking at your paints, if you're unsure whether or not it's uh, a safe paint in terms of heavy metals, just check the manufacturer's website or look on jerrysorama.com's website. I believe we have it labeled each color, a AP or CL on there. Uh, the information's available, okay? So you can find it if you need it. Uh, and if you're concerned. And also, like I said, you don't need a lot. They even make a, like, a small, like, put it in your pocket, more likely lose it in your studio size. Um, but whatever works for you. <laughs> Last thing, and I, I think that this is often the most overlooked with, I don't want to say beginners necessarily, um, but maybe let's just say artists that are not how should I phrase this? I find an area often overlooked by non-professionals is the canvas that they are choosing. A lot of people's go-to canvas, because it's so versatile, is acrylic cotton, uh, is acrylic prime cotton canvas, because you can paint oils on top of acrylic. Um, however, and, and I'm saying this with, with authority from various manufacturers in my own experience, if you're using oils, if you're paying for all these oils, if you, if you want to have the full oil experience, you are really cheating yourself if you are not using an oil primed linen canvas. Now I have over here, these are the um, Centurion OP Oil Prime Deluxe. These are the boards. It comes in stretch canvas, rolls, whatever. But the reason is an acrylic primer is a universal primer. It will accept acrylics, it will accept oils and other various mediums. However, it is an absorbent material, which means your oil colors are going to sink. And when, you, when I mean sink, you'll see it, that the colors are kind of sucked into the gesso 
uh, and it makes the painting look dull. With oil prime canvas, okay, the oil paint will sit on top of the oil primer. It's still on there securely and ain't going to peel off, okay, but it's not going to absorb in, which means those colors won't sink into the canvas. You are going to have a much better final product because you painted oil on oil. My rule is I paint acrylic on top, like you paint acrylic on top of acrylic prime, oil on top of oil prime. Uh, and quite frankly, you, you, you can't do that. If you're an acrylic painter and you're like, well, if that does great stuff for oils, you can paint, you, you even really shouldn't, you can paint acrylics, you can paint oils over acrylics. Like I said, you could put oil over an acrylic prime canvas and it would just kind of sink, but you cannot paint acrylics on top of oil, which means you do not want to paint uh, acrylic paint on an oil prime canvas because over time it will peel right off. Um, it might not happen right away, but it is not a strong bond. I don't know why that is. It goes one way or not the other, but it is absolutely true. And I don't know how much you're going to worry about this. Uh, obviously, you want it to look good. You want it to uh, give you the best results. But in terms of longevity, oil primed linen canvas will last exponentially longer. You know, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of years, if not longer, where a cotton canvas will not, just because the the fibers, or I should say, will not necessarily, I mean, the fibers are much longer with linen, okay, which means they make a tighter weave, um, and it's overall a more resilient thing. Imagine a, a cotton sack kind of be kind of like a sock versus a linen sack, which is like what you hold potatoes in, you know what I mean? It's, 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 a, it's a denser material, it's, it's more um, resilient, okay, and so when you're using a tenacious surface, that's probably a weird use for that word, if you're using a resilient surface, I'll go back to resilient, Look at my vocabulary today. Okay, I was reading it with thesaurus before work, so I wasn't. But wouldn't that be funny? Uh, why am I why am I not at work? Why am I sitting at home reading a thesaurus? <laughs> These are the questions I ask my therapist. Um, so using the oil primed linen will make sure that your paintings will last. So if I was a client, so let's say that you are a professional oil painter. Um, if if I'm a professional. I shouldn't say professional. If I'm an art collector, I want to make sure that that piece of art is going to last. And if you go through the spiel with me, now they don't know that I talked to you, so don't tell them that we had this discussion. But you can tell them what I told you and say, listen, my oil paintings are all done on oil primed linen. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that this is going to be something that your great great grandchildren will be able to enjoy. They're going to last. And it's oil primed so that the colors aren't going to sink over time. So if you like the way my painting looks now, you'll continue to like the way my painting looks for the next few hundred years. And I think that that will add some value to your artwork if they were not already aware of the surfaces. Because a lot of times I see people that, you know, buying art, which is great, I'm so thrilled they're buying art, but they don't ask the questions that I would ask, like, what brand of paint did you use for this? And I always, it's funny, when I ask that, they always say, uh, acrylics. And I say, no, no I understand it's, it's, it's an acrylic, I can, I can, I can tell, what, what brand? And if they tell me they're using, you know, cheaper paint, I'm less likely to, because some of these pigment, pigments uh, are just not as vibrant, you know. Uh, I want to know that they're using good stuff, um, because if I'm going to invest in art, I want to make sure that it's going to, it, all the materials are going to last. You know, I don't want to buy a car with uh, an old engine. You know, even if the, the, the car is all brand new outside, you know, if the engine's only got so many years left on it, you're just going to have a shell of a, of a car, and you might have a shell of a, a former painting if, uh, you know, all the elements aren't right. You will have something that you think is a must-have. Please share it below. Let other people know what you have. I am one opinion. Uh, I'm, I'm coming from a point of, I've been around art supplies my whole life, and these are just things that I've kind of curated in my head saying, that looks easier. Guess what? It was easier. And that's what I'm sharing with you here. Um, but please tell me, what did I get absolutely wrong? I want to know your comments. Put it down below. And while you're at it, please be sure to subscribe. Ring the bell to be notified when we post new videos. Um, we uh, love you for your support. Uh, and uh, every like just makes me feel like we're doing the right thing. So that's what we're going to try to do. We're going to try to do something that is worth your time, is entertaining, and um, doesn't want to make you jump out of a window. <laughs> and uh, you can follow me on Instagram at Mike MikeNotJerry, uh, where um, I just post stuff. It's, it's my Instagram. So it's a little bit of me. It's a little bit of Jerry's stuff. It's a little bit of art. It's, it's just me. Uh, so that's it. And uh, let's wrap this up because I'll, I'll just keep rambling. So thank you.
Good night and good luck.